welcome to another jewelry making video brought to you by KeepsakeCrafts.net. Today we're going to be using a different kind of finding. It's called a slider and you can use it to make a double strand necklace. Ours has pretty beaded scallops. So to make your necklace, the first thing you will need are four of these. They're Swarovski Elements Square Sliders and the color is called Tanzanite. And what's nice about them is they have two holes. So you can use these for making double strand bracelets, but today we're going to make a double strand necklace. For beads, you will need glass seed beads, and these are about just under three millimeters. These are optional, but they're nice to have to stretch your beads. Some little spacer beads, these are also just under three millimeters. And if you like a pendant and a jump ring or a bail to hang your pendant, for finishing your necklace, you will need four crimps, four crimp covers, and two wire protectors, a lobster clasp, and two jump rings. You'll also need two 30-inch pieces of bead stringing wire, some bead stoppers, and for tools, you'll need chain nose pliers, crimping pliers, and wire cutters. So let me show you first off how to best deal with these strands of seed beads. Usually they come in hanks where you get several strands in each hank. So this is nice because these keep them all together. And so what I've found works great is that you take two of your bead clamps, bead stoppers, and you put one beside one seed bead and then separate out as much of the thread as you can and put one on the other side. Oh, I should have a pair of scissors, but wire cutters will work. And then you just snip the thread in between. And now you have your strand nicely secured and it's going to behave and not have seed beads going all over the place. So we're going to build this necklace from the center out. And the first thing we're going to do is put a bead stopper on one end of one of our 30 inch pieces of wire. Next I'm going to lay my strand in one of the channels of my bead design board and take off the stopper and then I'm going to slide my wire right through those beads and it should just go right through them so no individual stringing here and you can just pull them off in sections and you want to keep doing this until you have 14 beads on this strand. Once you have 14 beads on, go ahead and slide one of your sliders onto the wire. And make sure you get through two holes. Now put a bead clamp on this end. And go ahead and put a slider on the other end as well. Make sure it's going the right way. The first one doesn't matter, the second one does. Make sure you're going through both holes. And now we're going to string on 12 beads and another slider. Again, make sure they all the sliders end up facing in the same direction. Put your bead clamp back on and repeat to add 12 beads and another slider on the other side. And now you should have something that looks like this. All of the wire is going through the top two holes in the sliders with beads in between. Now you can add four beads to this end and then clamp it. Now you're going to take your other 30 inch piece of wire and add 18 beads to it. And then in this center section, slide one end through your slider. And now this is the time when you'll take a look at it and decide if you want a deeper scallop or a shallower. It depends on the size of beads you want. And so here you can, I, I like it kind of shallow and not too deep, so I think that's just right. But you can adjust to suit your taste. And then we're going to string on 15 beads and back through the bottom holes in this slider. And I hope you like this little trick of stringing the beads right from the thread. It really saves a lot of time than stringing them each on individually. 
Now go ahead and add four beads to each of these pieces of wire here. And again, this number can change depending on the proportions. We're just going to have four beads before we um, bring this down to only a single strand. So once you've strung on your four beads on the end, now you're going to slide a single bead onto each of those wires, onto both of those wires. and then you're going to slide a crimp onto both of those wires. Now I'm going to make sure my beads are centered in my wires so I don't end up cutting it too short on one end. And then use chain nose pliers to flatten that crimp and cut off one of the wires right above the crimp. Then, I've shown you this before, use crimping pliers to pick up a crimp cover and cover that crimp. Slide your beads down and repeat to add 15 beads and 4 beads and 1 bead and a crimp and a crimp cover on the other side. So now I've finished off my ends and both sides are reduced down to one strand. Be sure that when you're finishing your second side that you pull up both wires till they're just snug and then back off just a smidge like an eighth of an inch or so before you crimp down that crimp and that will give enough slack in your wire so that it will hang gracefully. I've also added beads to that single strand just to make the necklace the length I want it to be and now all we have to do is finish it and you finish it up by sliding on a crimp, a wire protector in one end, out the other slide on a jump ring that's for your lobster clasp to go through that end goes back through the crimp and again pull it up snug and then just just back it off I just use my thumbnail there to back it off a little you, know, you don't want a lot of wire showing like that but you don't want it so tight that these beads are stiff Flatten your crimp, pick up a crimp cover with crimping pliers, oh, trim that wire first, and then cover that crimp with the crimp cover. Repeat to finish the other end, adding your lobster clasp to the jump ring. Now there's one additional step to this necklace, and it's entirely optional and up to you, but it's kind of pretty to add a little sparkly pendant to the center of the lower loop. Um, I have here just a crystal heart. It's about a 13 millimeter heart. It isn't Swarovski. It's one of these that you get at the craft store. And they're nice. Um, you know, they'll do. And you can use either a jump ring or I'm going to use a pinch bail, which I'll show you in a minute. But first of all, I want to show you how these come. They come on a chain with these huge and thin jump rings. Do not be tempted to use these jump rings. They've got too big a diameter and they're too fine gauge a wire to have any kind of security. Don't use it in your jewelry. Instead, find, you know, either wire wrap it and string it on first or find a nicer gauge wire to use. But I'm just going to use a pinch bail. And it's called a pinch bail because that's what you do. You pinch it. And I'm just going to put it over these beads. I'm going to find the center bead. It's kind of hard to show you this, but it just goes right into the holes. Each of those little hooks, one goes into the front hole of the bead, or pendant, and one goes into the back hole. And then you pinch. And now it's on there. And there you have it, a very feminine necklace made possible with some very different findings. So here's another look at the necklace we made today. I hope you like this project and that you'll give something similar a try. This would be a great one for experimenting with different 
shapes and sizes and types of beads. You could use two different kinds of beads on the top and bottom strands, use different kinds of two-hole connectors, all kinds of possibilities. Thank you so much for watching Keepsake Crafts videos. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing and click like. And also check out my blog, KeepsakeCrafts.net, where I have lots more creative ideas and inspiration. Happy creating. Bye-bye.